Okay, okay, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Planet Xbox Podcast. I am your host, the Best Bot Kids Move, and I have ILP Gaming Addict, Game uh, Addict Arena. What's up, man? What's going on, man? We've had a crazy week. Crazy couple weeks, actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, let's, uh, we got a couple things to talk about. Don't want to hold everyone too long, but uh, this is, you no know, happy I had Labor Day. Was it Labor Day? Or Memorial Day that just passed. Labor Day weekend. Like um, to everybody, you know, hopefully you got to enjoy it. Uh, we're also in tech timber. That's what they call it. September where all the new games are coming out. Uh, a couple games notable. Obviously, Star Wars Outlaws came out. I don't know if we did a podcast since then. My review is out on my you channel. OK, so I gave that game uh, seven and a half. Uh, out of 10 it's available uh, on my uh, channel check that out uh, check out the review also if you're interested in buying Star Wars Outlaws or any game from Ubisoft uh, make sure you go to Ubisoft Connect use my discount code KIDSMOOVE and um, when you add it to your account at the checkout use a discount code KIDSMOOVE and uh, get a savings and support your boy um, we got that we know we got some news uh, in regards to how you know star wars and ubisoft is faring i guess the the, the sales are lackluster uh the reviews are obviously mixed um there is also obviously you know space marine 2 i think came out either today or the reviews are out today i'm not sure if the game is out today um microsoft looks like they're bringing transformers and tony hawk possibly pretty soon and uh there's more games skipping Xbox and some games that were skipping Xbox coming back to Xbox. We're definitely going to get into that. And uh, there's a big uh, marketing deal uh, taking place that Addicts definitely wants to talk about. So expect a classic Addict rant. But before we get into that, what are you... Co- the bus before I even <laughs> do it. Like, expect- I feel the rant coming on. What, what are you... Oh, there's definitely a rant. What have you been uh, playing... The Iden Chronicles, Hunter here. That's all pretty much been playing. Uh, I kind of put Star Wars on the back burner for right now. Okay. Like, it's nothing against the game. It's just like, I, I don't know. Like, I'm having a hard time, like, getting myself to play it right now. Yeah. Because I, I just, I'm in, like, this this turn base mood currently. Yeah. Uh, you know, once I got access to this kind of Star Wars, I was kind of stuck on it. So, Star Wars. It's not that it like it's one of those games where I I I like the game, but then there's a lot that I don't like about the game. So it ends up being a game that you know I invest in, but I know it clearly has flaws that I don't like. Overall, beat the game. Thought it was a good experience. Classic uh, classic Ubisoft experience um, with these games. Um, but I it, it was it was it was a nice you know break for me. It was it was a good it was just a good game, uh, a decent video game. That could have used some improvements. There were some obviously things that I shared on various podcasts and on um, in my review that I didn't like about the game. Um, but other than that, it's a, it's a pure pure video game. You know what I mean? If it's available on discount, um, you know, definitely pick it up. Uh, or if you are subscribed to was their Ubisoft con- uh, subscription service, you know, definitely check it out uh, there. Um, but I wrap that up. Try playing Black Myth Wukong. I'm having trouble with that game. I might, uh, you know, just stream it. I got to find a, a good starting point to stream it. But I'm still at the beginning getting beat up by that stupid glass baby boba fat thing that you find in the middle of the woods. Um, no, with the spikes in its head. Yeah, I think they're, his his moveset is stupid. And uh, I, the game is very cheesy. I don't think the game looks all that good either. I did, I did the opening scene, thought that was cool, but I'm and I'm playing on PC. I'm not playing on PlayStation. Um, I mean, I know I'm not playing at the highest settings, and I'm not playing with ray tracing because ray tracing tanks my GPU. Um, but the only way for me to get play the game at 60 FPS or better is to play at uh, high settings, no ray tracing, and uh, I don't even know what resolution. I think I'm running 1440p maybe, um, but. Overall, I mean, it, it looks it looks good. Stories so so. Uh, I'm not feeling the cheesy like you know. I want to piss you off. Sort of combat. It's not quite Souls, uh, but it's just sort of like 
challenging in his own degree. Started that. Don't know when I'm going to return to it, but I'll probably I, when I do return to it, I'll return likely on stream. Uh, then there's also, um, you know, can can I need to get back to it? I'm actually lost in the game. I have to for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I'm I'm lost, but I have to pick that back up. I really do want to finish that. I st- the uh, can I, I started prior to Star Wars Outlaws coming out and um, the other game like damn there was a lot of games that I like Mafia I was doing I, I, I finished Mafia I was going to try to go straight into Mafia 2 but I don't know when I'm going to address Mafia 2 um, I you know started playing Starfield again uh, because it's a good game to play after you've played through Star, uh, Star Wars Outlaws and they, we know we got the expansion coming up in about three weeks uh, Shattered uh, Dreams um, I'm curious of where does this expansion take place? Like, I have two active save files on Starfield. One, my original playthrough, which where, where I beat the game, but I did the new game plus a couple of times. So I'm a Starborn in one save file, and then another save file. I kind of started the story over again with a different character build, and. I'm playing through that and and obviously it's a much different experience because I'm you know obviously you're playing at 60 plus I actually I'm playing at an unlock at f- frame rate so the game looks better the game performs better and I got a rover a, v- a land vehicle um and the thing is it's like I don't know what save file or wh- where do I where does this expansion take place is it is the expansion built with you already being a star born in mind or is it doesn't really matter uh, I'm curious to see how that uh, plays out uh, because then I want to know what level of like you know the the creatures and the enemies you're gonna be going against because I'm, I'm relatively early in my second my second character playthrough but clearly obviously I'm new game plus three times in my original save file so it would definitely be helpful to see where that takes place so it'll, it'll allow me to de- determine what um i guess where i should pick the game uh, where i should pick up at uh how i should approach that uh, expansion uh also for those you know xbox series s haters starfield is finally 60 fps on xbox series s it got its update to get 60 fps 40 fps uh, and the unlock frame rate option. So shout out to the, you know, Series S and, and uh, for Xbox first party for, you know, stills, you know, supporting that console and showing performance can be done. So uh, let's get started. What should we tackle first, Addict? Uh, I, <coughs> what's the topics that you generally like really want to talk about? Well, there's a lot going on. There's the game. Uh, what's the developer that uh, you know bought his issues to Twitter? Uh, they announced their immediate delay on um, their game. I keep forgetting the game's name, uh, but it's like a Souls like oh, game. Are you talking about the one that kind of bullied Microsoft into, into uh, responding to the DMs? Um, what the heck's going on? Oh, yeah, my um. Well, let me make sure that uh, I have something. Like something just kind of interrupted my screen. Um, oh, of course. Give me one second. Oh, I can't stand this bull crap. Look at smooth messing up. No, it's just like uh, no, like when you have a, a bunch of crap on. Wow. Sheesh. Um, I hate Twitter. It's too violent. But um. There is a um I forgot the name of the uh, the freaking I, I retweeted it. I forget the name of the, the studio and the name. It's like these developers with their weird uh names. Let me just go to the uh I know I retweeted it though, I retweeted it for a reason. Oh did I like it or did I retweet it? I so, think it's uh I know what game you're talking about. I just, every time I try to pronounce anything, people clown on me. Yeah. No. Oh, Eno, Enotria, the the last song. So, Enotria, like this is a Souls game. This was showed off, I think, at a either Gamescom open the night or something like that, or if, was it showed? Where was it shown? Or was it a uh, a state of play? I forget where it was shown off at, but. Um, they got a um they're putting out a, a souls like game 
they made an, an announcement saying um, that they're delaying for Xbox. And though everybody, obviously, fanboys come to the conclusion that oh, the Xbox Series S is this, 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 this. That's what everybody's throwing at, throwing at, and then that kind of forced the developer to say. No, it's not the Xbox Series S. The game works fine on there. It's, you know, Microsoft is not replying to their store submission, which they're the second developer to have that type of problem. The first one was Hack, H-A-A-K. Um, so while that was going on, so, you know, everybody came out, you know, Microsoft, hey, like, uh, you might want to address this problem. Uh Phil Spencer, uh, according to the developers, um, responded to them and got them in in connection with the Xbox team. So it looks like they're uh, were able to resolve that issue. I don't know if the game is still uh, delayed, but uh, their tweet from seven hours ago, September 4th, uh, 2024, he says maskless ones. Thanks to Xbox P3, a.k.a. Phil Spencer. And our amazing community, we're now in direct contact with the Xbox team. We're excited to work on bringing Enotria, the last song, to Xbox ASAP. Um, They said the power of the gaming community is unreal because obviously there was a lot of tagging. Um, You know, I did my share because stuff like that is is, is annoying because that sounds like uh, this is that's like if if, if you're, you're if you're telling me games are skipping Xbox because of something like that communication that's that's bad and my thing is how many of these people you know were part of the you know the layoffs like did they like shut down the people uh, did they fire all the people that's responsible for bringing games to the platform um that's a and that's an immediate fix they need that's an, something you need to fix immediately you know take off get rid of these people that are responsible for blocking accounts or suspending accounts or banning accounts you don't need them you need somebody to get games on your store and these are dumb reasons to have you know games skip your platform so that means playstation has a bunch of exclusive because xbox is incompetent in responding to game submissions and, and the thing is that drive me nuts about that and attic you've complained about this all the trash games that come on Xbox that are like three bucks for three thousand gamers scored, like those launch every single day. They, it's like they didn't pass no type of inspection or anything like that. They just let those games on, and they come out frequently. To have because they're they're small and easy to pass the certification. Yeah, but to have a game like this with some sort of backing, or with some sort of like some sort of like hype or like that's 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 crazy uh for that to be a thing and 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 xbox they need to fix that soon that they have too many of these like simple problems that these other platforms are not having They, they, they have literally the problems that xbox have are problems that you will find at like a freaking walmart or a wendy's or something like that some like something uh like like a one of those you know first time jobs uh where you you have a bunch of people hired that just like you know they they just they're like they don't really it's not the job they prefer to be at they just have that job because they need a job you know and things just slip through the radar and but the thing is that's like one important thing because that has direct impact to the bottom line whether they want to you know believe that or not but good job to the xbox community and for applying the pressure all the grifters all the journalists anybody that was applying pressure to get them to do something about this but you know it shouldn't really take that uh to get games you know coming to xbox i think xbox being in the position that they're in they're a platform holder they're they're trying to sell consoles they're trying to sell game pass subscriptions and they're trying to sell games ultimately uh you you want to be the premier place for not just uh, gamers. You also want to be the premier place for developers. And, you know, it looks like over the past years, they strengthened their relationship with developers. You know, we've seen we had interviews. Uh, we've seen interviews and in, in videos of developers talking about how easy it is for to get their games on Xbox and how Xbox work with them. Like, think about the what's the 
the people that just made the uh, the toy game. Uh, that they, they, they Hyper yeah hypercharge they, it's like so it's like polar opposite. So I think what happened in the last couple of months because you have great examples of Xbox being really good at this, and now we got like like polar opposite examples of them being really bad at this. They, they typically get kudos on this, and and now recently between Hack and now in Tor and Otria and and we don't know what the hell going on with Wukong. Um, I mean that sounds like they're I don't know what's going on there, but. What's going on with Xbox? Like, you have a little bit more insights on them, with them. Like, how does stuff like that happen? The way I'm perceiving from what I'm seeing, like, on, like, Twitter and stuff is, like, Sawtail went, like, heavy into, like, AI customer service. Because, uh, I mean, think about it, like, just even Xbox. Like, when you try to get a hold of someone on, like, customer service, like, it's they, they they literally invented a whole program to do it. I don't know what yeah. that program is. Uh, like the, the ambassador program, ambassador, yeah. the ambassador program. Uh, so they're doing it. So like you're not really seeing like any any people trained to do this anymore. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's so true. That that's where I come from. It is like I feel like a lot of this is because. There's not actual people behind the screens doing it. It's a lot of AI stuff. Mm -hmm. so that's why, because to me, that's the only thing. That, unless, like, people are so negligent to go three or four months without responding to emails, to me, it's got to be a program messing up. But my thing is, if, if AI is set to do that, my thing is, all right, so that means this must be 50-50. If they're using either AI to fish through and vet and, and, vet and, and intend it, but my thing, if you're going to go AI, AI typically, it should be like almost immediate, you know? But it, it depends but on how robust is, the system is, is, I guess. Maybe the AI isn't efficient. Uh, so I don't know. I don't, I don't know any situation that goes on with the AI stuff, but one thing I will mm. say is it's like, it is a little ridiculous that you would rely like even customer service on xbox like i said go go try to reach out to people on xbox now yeah yeah. Like, there's no xbox support no real xbox support anymore it, it's pretty much just like leave a number or and they may someone may or may not call you back mm -hmm. like i remember during the early xbox one generation that mm -hmm. wasn't the case yeah yeah you had like, 1-800-xbox or something like that yeah, it was 1-800 for my xbox i used to call um that I used, that was, I used to have one eight hundred for my Xbox on speed dial during the three sixty era in early Xbox One era when they actually and it was decent support yeah yeah real support yeah but once again you know like I said I don't mind AI I don't even mind AI taking jobs I mind I companies do. trying huh I said I do because I think no I, I I mind companies trying to use AI to rob people of jobs that are doing it better than AI. Like, if you can't, like, you better at least give me the same experience that a person can before you start trying to replace people's jobs. And a lot of these companies, they don't, they don't see the quality of the service. All they see is the money they can save by laying the people off. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's, um, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's really unfortunate. It's like, I have, I, I, I I like AI and I hate AI at the same time because I feel like it's gonna is gonna be overused for like everything and um. Because it, it, originally I would say it's supposed to be used to make our lives easier. Yeah. But I feel like companies are going to be corporate greeting and they're going to use it to replace people mm -hmm. and make their their lives harder. Mm -hmm. Like AI to me is supposed to like offset that gap between like the really really wealthy and the not so wealthy. But I feel like. The really, really wealthy is going to gatekeep a lot of the key AI components, and all, and, and literally nothing's going to change. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that um, yeah, that that's the, always a concern because obviously greed is always a part of this. Uh, money is always a part of this. Um, is like I said, it's always a part. Um, and, and it's can have that negative impact and, um, we'll, we'll see where it leads us. But for Microsoft, again, this is too early for them to be doing, um, you know, over, over relying 
on AI. And, and I think that's one thing you wouldn't rush uh, to do. Like you wouldn't, I wouldn't rush to push AI on the, especially when it have like pivotal impact on, um, on, on your pretty much on your production essentially. But the thing is, is these companies don't care. They just don't like, you know, when they were getting all that money through the pandemic, you would think that they would take a step back and be like, yo, we eating right now. There's a reason why we're eating right now, Mm -hmm. but let's, let's enjoy it while we can. Yeah. But instead of these companies saying that, they're like, we eating right now, and we can do whatever it takes to continue eating this much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but this is, uh, you know, a good example of, like, you know, it was fast response. You know, obviously, it was going viral. <laughs> Excuse me. And they figured it out. I'm happy they figured it out. Now, is this a game that... You know, people know this is probably literally going to well, be like some sort of needle, but the yeah, yeah. It's like, probably like some twenty nine ninety nine game. That's probably like a this is a freaking Thymesia part two, right? It's, the, it's, thing, the thing that's important though is regardless how people feel about this game and regardless the quality people see when they see this game, yeah, all that's irrelevant. Yeah, uh, these games when year by year we should we should hear like maybe one or two games missing the Xbox platform. And the, and it should just be stuff like that either physically can't be on the platform or like exceptions to the rule type of stuff. But I feel like yeah. and maybe it's just me, but I feel like every month we're hearing about another game that's in the Xbox platform. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, uh, we there was previously, you know, a game that was uh, slated to miss Xbox that has been recently uh reversed and i'm gonna pull out i think this was also an update as of maybe yesterday but uh marvel versus capcom fighting collection arcade classics and capcom fighting collection 2 are are actually coming to xbox capcom says we're happy to announce that after technical discussions with our partners at Microsoft, Marvel vs. Capcom Fighting Collections, Arcade Classics, and Capcom Fighting Collection 2 will release on Xbox One, backwards compatible to Series X and S, just like with the PS4 version. Both Xbox versions arrive in 2025. Uh, shout out to Clover. He uh, posted, you know, this is why feedback and bringing attention to the, to a problem matters. But again, this was, you know, a situation where there was, you know, outrage, uh, because well, of this, a lot of people, you know, we can't speak about things until it's facts. We can't speak about things until Xbox says mm-hmm. we can speak about things. And th- th- that's why, like, I can't get down with this all oh, doom and gloom stuff. It's like people got re- literally got mad at me just because I reported on this situation mm-hmm. that happened that we were just talking about. And it's like, but speaking out against these situations and bringing awareness to it is the reason they'll get re- resolved. Yo, whatever. Like, no one said anything about this Street Fighter thing. Do you honestly, truly think it would have got resolved? Mm-mm. What is the what was what is the what if the reason why I wasn't coming to Xbox was the same reason why uh, the last game wasn't coming to Xbox? Because it, maybe they submitted this a long time ago, and Xbox wasn't the only one. The one did respond, so they they was like they got a schedule. We got to release. A, we got we plan to release this at this time. Boom. You know what I mean? Xbox didn't respond. Nintendo, PlayStation, and obviously PC does. There you go. I, I, I honestly think a lot of this stuff is probably due to that reason, and they're not aware of it. And they're finding out once they... they no, I think they have to care. Well, here's the thing. It's not think they don't care. I think that it's like not high on their priority list. It, it should be like, now because it's, it's impacting their bottom line. It's impacting their library. They, I don't think they, they noticed it n- until now that, you know, it's becoming a, a reoccurring discussion. I think now that they, because they, they had to find out, I was like, well, why is this happening? And now they learn why one of the things happened. So you think, you don't think that would force them to look more into that area of their business? Like, well, let's look deeper here. Why are we lagging behind? What's holding us up? What is our bottleneck? You know, but at the same time, we have seen this before where they say that, oh, you know, we, we, we lost track on certain aspects of, of the business and 
we think like like the Japan thing. We you know for years they were really fighting on that Japan stuff, and now even though they're doing better on Square Enix, it feels like the rest of the parks they were working with during the Xbox One generation is falling apart. We're losing all these Capcom games. Like it, it, a lot of this has to do with the relationship between Xbox and these other regions. That's why you never see them missing too many regions when it comes to like you know american base and stuff like mm. the, a lot of this issue is on xbox's feet okay it, it, it no it's clearly an issue but i do think I, I don't think i think the issue is fairly new um and then in in in, in these days developers are coming out and telling people exactly what <laughs> the what the problem is, you know, they're they're telling them exactly what the issue they're having. No, why it's not coming out. So they're, they're the developers being bold enough to tell you if it's a Series S. The developers are being bold enough to tell me, hey, is because Microsoft won't respond to this, or they'll be bold enough to tell you that it didn't pass certification. Uh, the, the 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 fact of the matter is, developers are coming out and they're letting people know the issue. Now, typically, PlayStation and Nintendo don't have these issues when things go wrong, um, but you know, they're telling them exactly what's wrong. And they're coming out and they're responding to them. I'm hoping that this is something they fix so they don't have to keep responding. But the thing is, it's like, how long is it going to take before they fix it? That's my biggest thing. It's like, how long is it going to take them to realize that this is an issue? Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, So uh, let's uh, talk about... Let's talk about. Uh, we have to talk about it. Uh, the fastest death in gaming history. Oh, Concord. Oh, you, 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 we go in there. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it impacts Xbox because the thing is, is that you know, Concord is a games as a service, a multiplayer game. It was an initiative. I mean, we've seen, you know, people compare. You know, these games to games that Xbox, you know, release everybody, you know, care about, you know, player count until they don't. Um, so we there were rumors that Concord only sold 25,000 units. Uh, clearly, the Steam Which player is insane. It's insane. Yeah. How bad that did. The Steam player count <laughs> didn't break. What was the, the highest it peaked at was what? 600? Mm-hmm. That's insane. Considering all the Xbox flops, Redfall had higher peaks. Uh, Bleeding Edge had higher peaks. Uh, freaking um, and, and lived longer. So they're like Xbox flops have actually outdid. And this was a, pol- a fairly polished game. Uh, it's just that no one was checking for it. It released August 23rd. And it sunset on September 3rd uh, with immediate refunds to anyone that purchased it. Like. How like how, how do you recover for something like that? Because, you know, PlayStation had a pl- plan for an initiative. D- didn't they buy that studio? Mm-hmm. For this particular game. For, this, like two. for this particular game. Hmm. That's hard. Now, think about it. Bleeding Edge failed, but it didn't fail enough to shut down Ninja Theory. Redfall, did, 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 like realistically, did it fail too? Like, oh yeah, considering failed. yeah, yeah <sighs> considering it, the game still, you know, generated the studio generated money without even making a game that year. Yeah, twenty twenty. It's like look yeah. like. We have to establish what exactly did we think they were going to do from the start. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's why I feel like this industry has a really bad habit of setting crazy expectations on games that we're yeah. realistically never going to ma- uh, manage those. Yeah. PlayStation has a problem with their multiplayer uh, initiative. I say PlayStation has a problem because they... PlayStation... Clearly, obviously, everything's driven by money, but they keep doing these type of games, right? But they want to upfront cost for it. 
and, and not to say that they, they should that it's a bad thing that they want to offer a cost, but when you consider in the market you're trying to compete with, all your competitors are free. Like all your primary competitors are free. There's like no buy-in. It's just the they they're they the gameplay loop is good enough for retention. And they get money based off their in-game purchases and cosmetics. What PlayStation is doing with their game is like the like the cosmetics, the characters, you know, with all those colorful characters and stuff like that. Uh, they want to buy in the 40, 40 50 dollars. I don't know how and but they're not getting the retention. So that's the, the the one thing they got is that they come into these these games as a service halfway. You know, Helldivers was good, but they caught lightning in the bottle with Helldivers 2, right? It worked out for them. But everything else didn't. Like, no, Foam Stars didn't. Destruction All Stars didn't. And um, now Concord didn't. These were all games that, you know, were pegged as games as a service. And they were games that probably should have been free. And they kind of dropped the ball in general when it came to, like, uh, Helldivers 2 because they did that. Force uh, migration mm-hmm. sign in, and I feel like that really killed a lot of the momentum going into that game because I yep. felt like the way they were establishing that as a game of service was re- like ingenious, like community driven. Yeah, I felt like they were doing a really good job, and I do personally see that the moment when that was announced, I don't think it ever truly recovered from that situation. Yeah, it, that stuff like that you have to do, like, it has to be a, a step. In the game at launch, right? You don't you don't put everybody get everybody access to this game and then pretty much change their pretty much their behavior by instituting that they were changing behavior of gamers and PC gamers were obviously against that. But uh, it was more so. I don't know if that was a if that was reactionary. Obviously, it seems like they were they clearly plan to do the whole PlayStation sign. I think they should have done that as soon as they created the initiative to get on PC. I think like Microsoft, like there was never a thing where Microsoft didn't have a login, right? That was just what they did from the start. Um, and PlayStation should have did that from the start. But the thing is, it's like they finally caught lightning. A game finally, you know, took off that on PC because their games will come obviously to PC later and it doesn't it's not like it's like they're getting hundreds of thousands of players playing it it's usually pretty moderate success this was the first like catch fire success for it like hell divers and then it's like they wanted to take advantage of that momentum and they started making all these uh changes and it sort of backfired um now Concord I mean it's definitely sad what happened but like that like where do they go from here? What do they do? Do you think they turn around and make the game free to play? Do they broaden the um, the availability of the game and make it fully multi-plat? Do they completely shut it down? Or like, or, do, or does the studio get shut down? Like, what happens? Uh, I think there's a chance that it gets... Because if you read the statement, it, it kind of like stayed on there that uh, there's a you know they were going to reevaluate the game yeah i feel like those words are really weird to say for a game that you know is down now it could have been just them way of not just them way of doing a little bit of pr where yeah. it's like you know we're not promising anything but you know this might come back but part of me does feel like this this game cost cost them so much money that I don't realistically see PlayStation just shutting it down completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to recoup like, something. Yeah. I feel like they're going to refund everyone because it wasn't a lot. And they're going to tell the uh, the developers, go back and figure out a way to sell this as a free-to-play. Mm-hmm. Because the game wasn't initially launched as a free-to-play, so there was a lot of mechanics that would have been in there, like rotating characters. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of scenarios that, that, that could work out for them, but yeah. the problem is is, is PlayStation going to work? Does it matter? Because when the game was free to try out for their thing, no one cared then. Yeah. So it might be too late. That's... That's going to be extremely, extremely interesting um, to see how this all plays out. But, you know, I would love to be in that boardroom meeting for the returns. Like, I mean, how does that impact PlayStation financial quarters? Um, 
And again, this is not something that like I'm celebrating for the like, you know, the people, but it's just obviously, you know, this is it's big. I mean, the game literally just launched um, last week and, and it's dead this week. Of, of people doing things that uh, companies doing things to chase a bag that no one asked for. And it's just like, you know, I talked to a bunch of people that the game's appealing to them, mm-hmm. but they can't realistically, you know, there, there is a lot of things. Like, none of the characters are very appealing at all. You know, I would say some of them are very boring. And when you keep putting these on top of each other and you keep doing it over and over again, sooner or later, people are going to be like, okay, I'm done. You know, it's just like the, <laughs> the characters don't really appeal to me and... And it doesn't feel like it was it was it was improving. It felt like it was just getting worse. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I didn't. There was nothing I liked about the game. I, mean, I, I played the beta, um, gave it a try on uh, actually on PC. Um, no, I thought it played okay, but I, it just wasn't hitting for me. And I feel like they, I don't know what it is when these games were made, but a lot of them like are you know aiming to please a certain crowd and that turns people off people don't understand how much that turns people off you're better off just making a regular game and not trying to cater to anyone but the it it it, that game turned a lot of people off people wasn't messing with it the characters were you know they were impressionable but they were clearly you know disliked um and I think the pro- I can't say that the approach was wrong because question: What if Sony did this right? And I don't want to spend too much time on this because this is an Xbox podcast, playing Xbox podcast. But uh, the game itself, you know, it's multiplayer. You know, we all love uh, multiplayer games. We've and we've both platform have examples of failed and, and successful multiplayers. But a game like this, what if this game was like a launch, like like an Apex Legends launch, meaning? You don't you just put it out and it's free. Let the community discover it and then and, and decide. Do you think it fares better that way? It just depends. You know how things like this goes. You know, uh, we could sit here and we could say like over and over again that, you know, this game's going to work. That game's going to work. Mm-hmm. The only way for these games to actually be mad successful is that a lot of the casual audience needs to grab onto it. And it's like I said, when you look at something that happened like um, that happened like the free to play beta, mm-hmm. that, that was free, and there was no one playing the free beta. And this game was marketed too, so you can't even blame it on marketing. Yeah, I mean, it probably should. It probably shouldn't have marketed the game. <laughs> yeah, they they probably wish they didn't market it now, but. Yeah, I, I think it comes down to it's just like look like we're gonna have to get to the point where it's like you have to find out what's worth and what's not worth stuff. Uh, to yeah. me, it seems like these companies, you know, when it comes to like the inclusion stuff, I, I saw someone that said, "I don't mind inclusion. Mm-hmm. What I do mind is bullying." Yeah, and it felt like. It wasn't good enough just to have the characters in the game. They had to bully people that those characters weren't out of the game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And and, and, and I think that's a good example. It's like, you know, when it comes to the Star Wars thing, you know, I don't mind, uh, you know, homegirl being bisexual or, 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 or gay. What I do mind is I feel like they're they're shoehorning her, her sexuality when there's zero to do with it. Yeah, like you'd be talking yeah. to so it'd be different if like there's some romance issues, <laughs> yeah, yeah, or like something related, but they would be straight up constantly over and over again. I remember you were talking to that one chick. She's like, "You're lucky I didn't have more time before I'm leaving." Like, it's like, what does that have anything to do with what we're talking about? Like, yeah, like it yeah. would be so out of place. Yeah, which I, I wouldn't be surprised if these companies, such as like, um, such as like uh you know sweet baby ink if it starts getting to the point where these companies are like we can't work with them because it's hurting us now more than helping us yeah you're like yeah no no you're um you're right like again with the games that like add unnecessary you know agendas to the game and whatnot i love this the star wars example um 
it's I, I think I don't know it, it's crazy because you know you can tell like during times like when people try to catch on to a wave right developers they, the, 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 the trends but we live in a polarizing era you either one way or you're the, the other and you either is either going to be love or hate there's never going to be an in between and that's why i think developers need to tread extremely lightly when they're like when they're approaching these uh like video games it's like dude like stay neutral in your games it's like you know what i mean don't try to direct your audience one way and what i don't like too is i see people taking like developers perspectives and Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, we like politics in our game. And, and the people are like, oh, no, you know, we, we got to be fair, too. There's a difference between having political meanings in a game, mm -hmm. like games that's very political, but it's in the game political. Yeah. And having our politics push on to the game. There's two entirely different scenarios. Like a lot of the Final Fantasy games. Yeah. Extremely political. But they're, but it's not our perspective of political stuff. Yeah, my bad. Um, so the the other thing um, I wanted to talk about uh, while that we have uh, now that we kind of have like that out the way, uh, Space Marine Two. Uh, is this something that you're picking up? No. Why not? Because it's just something I'm not interested in at all. Really, you're not interested in the uh, Gears game set in a. Uh, uh, Warhammer uh, universe. I mean, I hear it's getting like good feedback. But, yeah, you yeah. Astrobots coming out Friday. Yeah. Like, I just don't have time. I it's just there's so much stuff going on. I didn't even make a video or stream today. I yeah, went, yeah. I was I, surprised. I thought when I called you, you would be streaming, but that nah, wasn't just, the case. I needed a day. I needed yeah. a day to myself. I <laughs> understood. Um, no, no, I, I would have like, pro I'll probably still make a video after this, uh, this, this podcast. Um, uh, there's a, I, I'm interested in space. Marine. I'm probably going to watch some reviews. I haven't seen anything yet. I'm going to watch some reviews, see what you know people are saying about it. I've been burned by many, uh, more hammer games. There's a couple of them on game pass. Dark tide is trash. Uh, hired gun is trash. And the bolt gun is so, so I, I'm, I'm playing that a little bit. I, I think it's the most I enjoy it the most, but that's, that's not saying a, a lot. So I'm, you know, definitely considering it. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen anything in regards to Asian mythology. I think that came out today. Uh, that's on PC, Xbox Game Pass is yeah, also I think on Steam. Because that's on Game Pass. So, yeah, yeah. I might. That's a play, RTS, I right? I'm interested in that a little bit. Yeah, um, that's RTS, right? Yeah, it's an RTS. I am a little bit interested in that because mm -hmm. I like the, the God aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, but besides that, I don't really see me playing it too much. Yeah, it's uh, uh well, uh, it is outperforming Concord, um, as far as uh, the um, uh, the players right now. Uh, I don't know how that uh, this was two hours ago. Uh, right now is on Steam is rated uh eighty eight percent for their reviews, uh, and then uh, the player count so far has reached uh, twenty thousand. 869 like the, the crazy thing in the days of console gaming there's a lot of emphasis on steam player out in the days of console gaming we the community hyper focuses on steam player count well, they've always kind of done that, though. Yeah, but no, this is this is literally in the days of like you know you know our games are. You know, if you're gay, we have no way else to shit on your game, right? So we're going to go by player count. It's reviews and player count because they can't really comment on sales because Game Pass is the thing. So since Game Pass is the thing, they can't really put too much emphasis on sales, but they can put emphasis on player count. And it's like, bro, we're, we're talking about player counts on a platform we're technically not playing on. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, like yeah. that's that, that's the thing. I, that's why I wish video but games. People did the same thing with like Starfield. Remember all? Oh, yeah, they, yeah, they murdered Starfield. On, yeah, it, yeah it, everyone's it, playing on that. They're not playing on uh, yeah, you know that platform. Uh, but uh, so shout out to Asian Mythology. It's a couple. Is it Era History and Told coming out this month as well? I don't know. Um. There was a uh, you guys. Did we talk about this? The avowed thing. 
Uh, we, did we talk the about it? Frames? Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. We did. I, I, Digital Foundry uh, had a clip on their DF Direct. They talked about it, and they seem they didn't seem like too bothered uh, by it, considering um, you know the game's a uh, you know visual target and stuff like that. Again, obviously, I prefer um, you know high uh, high frame rate. I think the game looks good. I do think it looks good. I would prefer to play it on Xbox. Probably will play it on PC, um, so I can get the visuals. That it's just that I don't trust my PC build. I don't trust my graphics card. Um, it's done. It's done me dirty uh, too many times, and that's why I keep running back to Xbox when I just say when I give up on tweaking settings, I run to Xbox. I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna play it on Xbox. Um, and because I feel like console gaming for some for me is giving me the most optimal experience. But we did have a Call of Duty beta, which you've indulged in a little bit, man. Thoughts on that? I actually enjoyed it. I didn't think it was like a horrible experience. Well, I play it like long term wise, probably not. You know, I'm not a huge fan of those type of games in general. Mm-hmm. But I can't I can't say that, you know, I didn't enjoy the time of playing it like I did enjoy it. Yeah, have fun with it. I'm looking forward to the game. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, day one, Xbox Game Pass. Uh, this is the first time I had fun with a Call of Duty. Um, I think I, I feel like I played decently, consistently. Um, I'm looking, and, and we know the multiplayer. Obviously, now we got know the multiplayer is going to be fun. I think the campaign is going to be dope, and I think you're going to have a complete package. Um, I felt good to, as an Xbox customer to be a part of the beta experience day one, right? And I didn't, you know, have to buy, you know, this, the, 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 the pre-order the game to get access to this beta. That's the best, one of the best things about Call of Duty being a part of Xbox. Uh, however, uh, I, I still don't think, you know, this Activision deal has, you know, given us the benefit that it needed to so far. Um, but we know there's some slight updates coming. Um they for some reason there's this this the 25 year anniversary for Tony Hawk that they're promoting now that they change in banners uh do you think that will turn into like a a game or or is that is it, or is this just another uh, maybe a game pass edition that we get the most out of this Probably like a game pass edition yeah uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. I haven't played Tony Hawk's in like for, for, for long, but I've never been good at Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. See, games like Tony Hawk for me doesn't really move the needle. Um, but there's Transformers, uh, which people I guess were showing the ability to like, I don't know, download it or manage the, the game in their, their, their download queue or whatever. Um, we did hear that Microsoft were going back to these licenses for like Deadpool and Marvel um, and now Transformers to get uh, some of these license renewed so they could at least sell the games or renew the games or at least be able to put them in Game Pass. Not, you know, there haven't been any official statements. These are all rumors, but, you know, there are rumors around regarding Transformers. Um, I would like that. Now, I haven't played any other Transformers games uh, with the exception of one by Platinum Games. I played that one. I thought that was kind of garbage. But the other ones, the ones that by High Moon Studios, um, I have not played. And like that's like the the Fall of Cybertron. And uh, there's this other one that they get. I think the games that came out in like 2016 and 2014. Um It'd be nice to to get those games. A lot of those games, I want a lot of the Activision's uh, uh, licensed games. Uh, I I would like I these games to go into Game Pass. I still don't own Prototype. I should probably I should I could probably buy it, but I want to try it in Game Pass before I commit to buying it. Um, but I I would like to play that, and I would like to sit, play it in Game Pass. I think um, with this Activision deal, that's the one thing that's been frustrating for it for me is that it did not it didn't happen like Bethesda I think Bethesda like I felt like it was such a a clutch uh buy because I feel like it it almost yielded almost immediate returns with the exception of Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo you know launching first on PlayStation is exclusive through due to like time exclusive deals but that back catalog helped a lot you know and it it, 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 it was good like it, we were eating good still eating good if you haven't played any of those games but like with activision having like quadruple the library of bethesda like dude xbox should be eating we should be eating like crazy right now and i don't know what's holding them up company 
Companies change since they bought ABK. Yeah. Yeah. They don't seem interested in a fraction of this that they was interested in when um they were first taunting about buying ABK. Yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, I think uh, you know, I like a broke Microsoft, ver- a broke Xbox versus a, a original. I like broke Xbox. Kind of, they, 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 they attempted. They went after things, and you know, you know, I, I feel like broke Xbox wasn't appreciated for the stuff that they did put out. Uh, but I, there's, I just wish they like came with the same energy, man. Um, I really wish they came with the same energy. Uh, what else uh, do we have here? Um, we've uh, talked about obviously uh, uh, the games uh, coming that we're skipping Xbox now coming to Xbox. Uh, you know, Concord. Uh, there's um, I feel like there's been so much going on. Um, you know, Call of Duty beta we talked about. Um, there's this particular r- rumor. And you've been commenting on this, I think, on, on a couple episodes of the Iron Lords podcast, and I think even in your own streams, um, the importance of Grand Theft Auto's uh, marketing um, and who gets it. Um, there's this rumor that PlayStation has secured the marketing for Grand Theft Auto. And what are you thoughts of if this is true is there any merit to this is it coming from any reliable source i don't know about like reliable source but it would make sense uh you know here's the thing like they've always worked with them so it doesn't surprise me that they're working with them now Mm -hmm. (sighs) so my thing is is like Personally, I don't really care. Um, you know, obviously, it'd be nice if Xbox grabbed that, but I'm just trying to think. It's like it, it depends on how the the, the the thing is. Is people know Grand Theft Auto is going to be available for all, all platforms? Sure, PlayStation logos at the end of it. Um, but you think this is a difference maker? This is the, this decides like the, how the rest of the generation is going to go. No, I don't think that. It's just when you take this and you consider it with a bunch of other stuff, like it does seem like Microsoft, you know, they're they're not putting money behind uh, putting, uh, you know, their own hardware. Mm -hmm. It it does feel like they're putting money in the games, but that's going everywhere. So it can't Mm -hmm. sell their hardware. Yep. Uh, Marketing doesn't seem to be a stretch by any means when it comes to uh, selling the hardware. Yep. And now, you know, getting these big third-party marketing deals. Microsoft's kind of, like, backed away from this in a, for a while now. But if you look at it, like, this is what... This is Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. This is the time that you pull out half, half you know, two, three hundred million just to get it. Like, th- th- this isn't... This isn't a small game. Like, this is essentially... This could potentially win, like... Like a random game, like a random Google can make a console, pay them a billion dollars to make it exclusive for six months. And that, that console going to get 10, 15 million consoles sold in a, in a month. Like the, this isn't a small game. And, and, and I know that they don't really go for these type of marketing deals anymore. Mm, yeah. But out of all the things that you make the exception, this is the exception. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if, if there's one marketing deal you grab, you grab Grand Theft Auto. I mean, but believe it or not, they did have the Ubisoft, they did have Star Wars Outlaws. So, which I'm surprised, like, why they even bother with marketing deals. But they did, they did, they did have the marketing deal for Outlaws. Um, and I believe they have the marketing deal for Assassin's Creed as well. I'm just trying to think. And that's cool. Yeah. But I would argue that Assassin's Creed. The, the, these marketing deals is a is a, is equivalent to like ten Assassin's Creed. Like it, the, the, mm. this this game, like there's very few games in the industry. Maybe mm-hmm. they don't need it as much because they have the Call of Duty marketing here going forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But imagine if they had GTA 6's marketing and Call of Duty's marketing next year. Like, it's just like, if you're not going to put money behind selling a platform, mm -hmm. at the very least, you need to be buying stuff that you can put your name beside to help sell it. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it's like, okay, if you have zero interest in selling your platform anymore, okay, that's a different conversation. But they're still in the market. They claim they're still making another platform. So it's just like, what is it? Yeah. Um, the the thing is about it it's like I, I, I get curious of like the, what would be the purpose of Xbox doing any sort of marketing deal like obviously because their, their, their games are you know going to you know their competitor that they're, they're publishing games on their competitor's platform so the thing is if they're not if they're Operating as a, a, a third party publisher, you know, what would be the benefit of them spending money uh, to acquire a marketing uh, deal? And the thing is, to me, I don't think marketing deals are worth it to Xbox unless the game is going to Game Pass. Now, the thing about these Ubisoft, and I will say this a lot of Ubisoft games do land in the Game Pass eventually. Um, so, like Outlaws, I think will land in there sometimes six months to a year from now, probably sooner, depending on how you know poor the game is selling. Um, so there's like there's always been that sort of re relationship between Xbox and um, Ubisoft. And the thing is, is that it, it, we've said many times that the, the marketing deals you want, you know, you want either you want obviously Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty. Um, and probably one of the big sports games, maybe it'd be, you know, FIFA or maybe it'd be 2K. You want um, uh, one of those, you want to have, you want to be a part of that conversation. You know, now that when you consider it costs them billions to essentially buy the Call of Duty marketing, right? Um, you didn't Rockstar, Grand Theft Auto is not available to you. Do you, you, you take that? You give PlayStation pretty much takes takes that. Um, and the marketing deal, believe it or not, is really only good for the lead up to launch. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm not mad at it. To I, I think I'm not I'm not bothered only because right they on. own the Call of Duty marketing at this point now. I would say that you're right in the majority of the facts, but in terms of GTA Six. That marketing is good years afterwards. You think? However long you're able to secure that. Look how, look, how many games in history has been on the top ten for years and years at a time. Yeah, but it, like it, GTA Five. Yeah, it was on a track for like Sony ten years. Yeah. Eight for GTA Five because they had literally one of the most compelling games in the industry, and it was on top of the the, the leaderboards every month. So every time one of those individuals saw that game, they saw the PlayStation logo beside it. And, and, and you know, maybe we can make the argument that GTA 6 isn't going to be as big as GTA 5. And mm -hmm. Maybe not. Uh, maybe there was a lot of, like, variables that went into place making GTA 6 the, what it was. But it's just like, why is if it's bigger? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. like they, there is... This is one of the times where I don't want to hear people say it doesn't matter. Because it's like Microsoft is one of the biggest companies in the world. You could easily outpay them. You can easily outbid. Yeah, There's you no can definitely outbid. It's like, yeah, but if they were all in on their gaming and, and selling Xbox, yeah, they would have the GTA marketing. Um, you know, if the checkbook was truly open and, and Satya was like, you know, win the console war, GTA marketing would be there. But I think if they really had that belief, no consoles would be selling like they would be selling consoles uh, because I think um, the only thing that stopped them from selling consoles is it's 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 marketing and the, the availability of games. Um, we've we've been able to see Sony pivot in years when they don't have much to like make it make it out like to end year. up they yeah like really this year they have much they didn't have much, they didn't have much still... last year either and they did they, like all they had last year was Spider Man but and everything else was done by Square Enix they literally had but every time Microsoft has like a, a 
has like a really big huge advantage on someone mm -hmm. what ends up happening is they there's some bad info that just completely hits you every time yeah 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 absolutely um but yeah i mean you know if if, if true you know i mean it, it's i don't know how honestly i don't know how big it is is that um we, we, we will we will see you know we will see you know who knows if Grand Theft Auto even comes out uh, 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 next year um, there was a conversation that we had an IOP and it was related to obviously you know the the multi-plat thing obviously um, obviously we, we don't a lot of us don't want them to keep supporting and we all want them to stop being we don't want this drip feed cycle where every so often we get bad news, right? That this game is going multi-platform or this game is going. And we know the PS5 Pro is now coming in. We got leaks, you know, the pricing. I mean, it's looking super expensive. 600 to 650. You know, there's going to be, you know, games. It should be the de facto place to, uh, uh, they should run the games the best based off price. And that's the newest piece of tech. Um, so I, I still find it strange why people would still try to compare it to the Series X, a 2020 console, to the PS5 Pro, which is a 2024 console. It comes out four years after the X, and people still want, finally want to say, oh, it's more powerful. Duh. Better be. Um, but I, I guess I'm tackling two topics at once. But the one thing I wanted to bring up in ILP the, the, the week that I was on was that Microsoft, for the, the games that are going like multi-plat they really should treat it almost as playstation treats games going to pc uh meaning that they don't really they don't it happens it happens but it, they're not going to do any promotion for it you know what i mean it's like they're not going to tell you when it just happens if it's day and day it's day and day you just kind of have to find find out if if it's if it's coming later just it, it comes when it comes and that's that it, it, they shouldn't they really shouldn't like set any sort of expectation and it just should be really on by you know if it comes it comes if it doesn't it doesn't like you know what i mean i don't think they should have any hysteria around it like what do you think like like i i think that's how they should approach it to the point or every time you announce the game you focus on your platform xbox console xbox game pass obviously pc game pass you focus on that because that's the avenue you're selling you know what i mean and if it happens to come out, uh, you know, six months, three months, you know, a year later, it didn't deal with it like that. It doesn't have to be like a, it just comes out. It just, that could be a blog post or something like that. Like, what are your thoughts there? Because we know they're not going to stop, but I don't think they should keep making a, an event or a, a marketing beat out of it. Sorry, uh, you my internet connection is really messed up what are you referring to xbox uh continued moving forward with their games going multi-plat oh oh i i feel you it should be one of those things where it's just one day it comes like yeah. it doesn't matter like just one day it's there but unfortunately i don't think that's going to be the case i don't think that's what they're going to do it seems like um it's like i said they they move around like they're not a they, they they don't sell they they move around like they literally don't sell consoles mm -hmm. like that's literally how they act that they don't sell consoles mm -hmm. so yeah and, i think that's one of those things where it's like okay indiana jones has a state of play and and yeah. january or something and they just say indiana jones is coming or it's like a youtube video drop that they're not doing a state mm -hmm. of play or and I don't think Xbox, Microsoft, none of them should announce themselves. Yep. Uh, you know, let let let. That's exactly how PlayStation does it. They're like, if if one of our games is going to another platform, mm -hmm. notice when Horizon. Where was that announced? That that Lego Horizon game. Well, that was announced at. Where was it announced? At Summer Games Fest, right? Yes, it, it wasn't on their stage. Yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah, and, and I, but honestly, it feels like Nintendo probably has some marketing rights for it. <laughs> That's what it feels like, you know. But, it, it, but ironically, Xbox had the marketing rights for the, like the first time MLB the show went to Xbox. I think in twenty twenty one or twenty twenty, um, they had the marketing. They literally had the marketing rights for it. Uh, ironically, 
Um, but uh, the PS5 Pro, man, do you do, are, are you still feeling the same way you felt when you first heard about it? Do you think it's a situation where the Xbox needs a, 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 a Pro console? I still think they do. Um, unless next year the next Xbox is dropped. Uh, then I'm a little bit, you know, if they in the generation early, mm-hmm. then yeah, they need it. But at this point, I don't care anymore because it's like Xbox don't care about their own hardware. Yeah, they so don't. why should I care if they can't do anything with it? That's true. Like you know, they 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 tell everybody and they mom to go play cloud computing, to go <laughs> play PlayStation, to play their own games, and yeah. they do nothing to sell their own console. And then they keep wondering why the numbers just keep going down and down. No, absolutely, absolutely. It's like now I don't I, I personally don't think a pro console or a mid gen console is needed. Now I know the, the performance of games like starting I guess they're starting to show that hey, maybe it's needed, but the thing is is that I still don't think these consoles are like fully tapped. I mean, we're still getting PS4 releases and xbox one releases so my thing is is that i'm curious what do they what is the selling factor you know what i mean what is the selling factor what is going to be the de facto purpose why do i need the upgrade because i do personally i think the ps5 and series x games look fine i'm satisfied with the games that with the look of the games um so i i I don't think we're in need of this uh this pro console and the thing is and i can respect microsoft for not doing it if, if their plan is truly in two years to release their next generation console then yeah then yeah because at that point it's leapfrog um and i do think the thing i'm curious about the ps5 pro is that because I, I hear that it's going to have some features uh that the series x has but that hasn't been taken advantage of and if developers are going to be taking advantage of these features do they now take advantage of those features in the existing Xbox series? Like, you know, does it help? Did the PS5 Pro exist and help the Xbox series? Um, in, the, in in this case, if it's going to have features that are more in line with the, the Series X. But um, me personally, I, I'm not sold on ray tracing yet um, for the simple fact that, like I said, I can't even run ray tracing effectively on my computer. And... Um, and if I when I do want to fall in love with ray tracing, because the thing is, I'm if I want I don't want ray tracing compromise. I want ray tracing at fi- high fidelity at high frame rate. If my PC can't do that, then like I want to put so I'm going to do I'm going to go there. I'm going I'm to upgrade my PC to the max to do that. I don't know how much of improvement the PS5 Pro is. And then with the PS5 still selling for four ninety nine and three ninety nine respectively, how much do they plan to sell the PS5 Pro for? Six hundred. Yeah, and we shall see. Which is when you consider is it like what, Xbox decided to sell a six hundred dollars Series X for that just has a different skin and extra terabyte of space. I think that's stupid. I think they should like honestly. They probably should put that on an immediate. There's no Microsoft. They really should do. They should really pivot. And, and shave like a hundred or two hundred dollars off their console cost. They should probably just do that. Yeah, uh, I think at this point they, uh, you know, PlayStation wants to continue the pro trend, mm-hmm. and it might work out for them, especially if they're the only console that's running, you know, GTA six at sixty frames next year. Oh, you're happening. Uh, well, uh, if, you know, if, that if, might happen. I don't think that's uh, happening. I don't think if if it, if it's going to be sixty FPS, if they're going to have a let me say that if they have a performance toggle on a PS5 Pro, there's going to be a performance toggle on a Series X because I don't think they have. To, I don't think it's going to be that significantly different to to get the game at 60 FPS if they're just getting a, a if it's following the same trend of PS4 Pro to PS4 did, then they, they that means they would have to like get like more CPU power significantly. Now I'm not saying maybe GP, uh, GTA is already targeting like freaking you no know, 60 FPS regardless now, and yeah, and then if 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 all platforms are targeting 60 FPS, then yes, the PS5 Pro should 
maintain 60 fps the best but i don't think if a game is not targeting 60 fps and this i don't think it's only going to target 60 fps on the ps5 pro unless of, co- of course they do have the marketing deal and that's in their agreement to give them a 60 fps option that but i don't think it's going to be like some crazy locked 60 fps i think it's going to be a horrid 60 fps because it's rockstar you're not known for being performant yeah, I agree. But the uh, thing is, is like, you know, like I said, when it, when we were talking about the PlayStation thing, uh, well, I talk about the marketing. If there's a game, yeah, to try to work something out to make this a possibility, mm-hmm. it's this game. Yeah, that's true. All right, well, let's get ready to skedaddle here. Uh, Attic is, uh, I appreciate. Uh, doing another episode uh do you have anything ongoing um uh that you want to uh talk about before we get out of here uh no not really i will be streaming uh astrobot this weekend so that's okay. gonna be a fun awesome experience. that game comes out friday right yeah shout out to playstation before their friday for their friday releases yeah uh, i don't know why more people don't do that yeah yeah that's what's up uh astrobot i guess uh my kids start scooters. I don't want to. This would be the week that I should actually. I would be spending money on games. Astro Bot, um, considering it. Um, for some reason, I gotta check on my PlayStation because I haven't been able to connect to the internet recently. Um, Space Marine Two is a question. I'm gonna try to download Asian Mythology. I gotta find a game and stick with it. I'm, I'm struggling to like marry a game. Um, I'm having issues with Wukong. Um, but yeah, Astro Bot. You know. Definitely, you know, think it's uh, worth giving it a shot. Uh, will you be doing a review for that? Or are you just going to be doing a stream? Uh, probably just streams. Okay. Well, uh, I might. I don't really review games anymore. Oh, okay. I did. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I should. Uh, yeah, I, I still enjoy it, even if I don't, you know, get, get the, the the greatest of, of views from it. Um, but um, man, thank you. Uh, it's been a good episode. Thank you to the Patreon and you know Weapon Will uh, for hosting another episode of Playing Xbox Podcast. Uh, we will see you guys on the next episode uh, a week from now. So, as always, guys. Xbox is the best box. I am the best bot. Good night or good morning if you're on the other side of the globe. We are out of here. Peace. Peace, guys.